Another one of my favorite projects is currently operating on the Binance Smart Chain. It's called Thenafy. And I actually learned of it when Grizzly was talking about it about two months ago. Because on the 6th of April, so basically in five days, Thena would have been live for two months. All right. Now, this is by no means something that was purely created out of thin air. So the governance model that I'm going to be discussing is actually out there, but they implemented their own and they are the first to implement it on the Binance Smart Chain. But overall, regardless of this, there are so many good things to discuss about Thena when we talk about the theme, the metrics, the seriousness behind the people or the seriousness of the people behind this project and everything they want to achieve and focusing mainly to start with at least on the Binance Smart Chain. So starting things off, as I normally would when I talk about uh, projects from an overview manner, all right, security is the most important thing. So you need to be safe and sound whenever you put your money in a DeFi protocol. You need to sleep soundly, not wake up the next day and seeing all your money, you know, vanished. So they have been audited by PeckShield before their launch, like I said, almost two months ago. So I'm going to pull out a few highlights of that audit report but again if you want to check the full-blown audit report you can do so in their documentation you go to security you click on the audit report and you're gonna see uh, <coughs> all the detailed information about it so just a few things for you to know uh, there aren't any critical or high severity type of findings there are a few medium slash low no informational overall and about 90% of all of these medium slash low uh, se severity issues have been resolved, all right? There's still one that hasn't been. And I think, I mean, as you can clearly read, it says trust issue of admin keys, meaning if the team is safe and sound, if you trust the team, then this, is, this isn't even something to discuss, all right? Now, again, I think they have resolved this. Uh, there, there isn't any update on that report or any additional basically ad hoc update, but I think we're fine. So long story short, PackShield audit them, showed them what there, what there is on the audit report. They have resolved everything. So now we can move on to what is, in my personal opinion, the next most important thing. Now, I mentioned this website previously, DeFi Llama is one that I visit very frequently to check out uh, TVLs on chain, per chain, per DeFi protocol, volume, 24 hour, weekly, monthly. So I like to monitor these things just to understand where we're sitting. So if I'm investing in a DeFi protocol, I'd like to know its metrics, right? It's very important because if you're providing liquidity, remember that you are incentivized to do so because you're going to earn back some fees. So when a protocol does well in regards to volume, demand, people want to use it, means you're going to have more fees to claim for whatever liquidity you provide. So it's very important to do so. So right now, like I said, Thena only operates on the Binance Smart Chain, and you can clearly see that it ranks fifth in terms of volume. So I specifically chose the volume metric because it's very important, even though right now uh, it's its volume change has decreased by 23%. I'm not really worried because the team is very serious and they are building. And it actually picked up a bit. It went as low as 6 million, now it's 7.1 million. But if you go on the website, right here, right here it's about 8 million. So because this, this lags a bit behind from the official feed of the main website, all right? And one a very cool metric that I'd like to look at is the volume to TV other ratio. Now, this is mainly relevant for places where you only provide liquidity and you earn portion of the fees. It doesn't really uh, matter for Thena because most of the TVL is staked into their farms and they're not earning fees. So if you create an LP, stake it, you are exempt from fees earning. You only earn the, which is the native asset as rewards. Whereas if you create a liquidity pool, to uh, liquidity pool uh, LP token, and then you leave it be in your wallet, then you're gonna earn trading fees on that pair specifically. All right, so 
I'm gonna now jump into the explanation section of the video where I explain what this protocol is about because like I said the governance model is out there it was originally created by Curve so it's called V33 so it's a purely decentralized governance model that's what I love about it and I'm gonna discuss how Thena has incorporated so I mentioned earlier that the native asset of the platform is called Thi, so T-H-E for short. And like I said, they follow a fully decentralized governance model. So essentially what you can do on Thena is that you can swap assets. They follow the AMM uh, type of liquidity providing, meaning when you actually provide liquidity, you don't get 50-50 of both pairs that you need to provide for to get the full amount that you want. Let's assume you want to put in $2,000 worth of whatever liquidity pair you want. You don't have to put in 1,000 worth of A and 1,000 worth of B. So the ratio is basically skewed more to one asset versus the next. But all of these figures you can clearly see. So whenever you go and click on add liquidity, for example, you're going to see Let's say I want 2K, like I said, you're going to see how much I have to put from asset A. So maybe, I don't know, $700 versus 1.3K of the second asset. But what's most important, so this is basically irrelevant because at the end of the day, you're going to get the full amount again once you unpair your liquidity. All right. So you enter with 2K worth of whatever is worth of asset A and B and you leave again with 2K worth of whatever is worth of asset A and B as well. So that is something that you need to understand whenever you add liquidity. And what this essentially means is that there is basically a flow in regards to the fully decentralized governance model V33 that if you want to take full advantage of and leverage it, leverage it to the highest possible outcome, this is how you should be seeing this. So you basically acquire the T token, whereas was it the pre-sale airdrop whatsoever, and you lock those tokens for X amount of time. So the longer you lock them, the more voting power in the form of V3 you will be receiving. So if I do a two-year lockup, I'll have a lot of V3, means I have a lot of voting power. No, so what does voting power mean? And what is the incentive for you to lock your T tokens and not sell them, for example? Uh, and utilize that VT uh, voting power. So you acquire that voting power, then you use that voting power to vote for pair emissions. So pair emissions basically farms or pools, whatever you want to call them, they are there because several protocols have decided to basically leverage their asset in these pools to show people, okay, look, here is our asset if you actually want to take part of you're gonna earn basically emissions in form of fee so why does this matter for the protocol because in order for you as a separate protocol to list your asset on thena you need to bribe between quotation marks the voters to vote for your pool whenever the next epoch comes in and that's every seven days by the way so every seven days emissions reset for whatever the voters voters have voted on and then so on and so forth. It, it happens every week. Now, the interesting part here is that voters are gonna chase where the money is at, right? So if they see, for example, there's a lot of money in one pair, so they make the calculation. They see that there's, a, let's say, a $6,000 bribe, and there are, let's say, 6,000 votes, so each vote will get a dollar. And keep in mind, the ratio of one VT to a vote uh, it varies because it's not like one VT gets you one vote because the longer you lock it, you lock this up, the more votes you have. Keep that in mind. So they're going to chase whatever there is more bribe money. So of course, protocols are going to put more money for people to vote for them. But again, there's the loop of people who own the protocol also purchasing Thena or C, locking it to vote for their own protocol for more emissions and then they can get bribe in, in exchange for that so there's a lot of ways that you can play with this at the end of the day but whatever is important to understand is that because you're locking up your tokens you're gonna earn or you have the right to put uh, to basically uh, vote for the emissions for this uh, pair and then you can get money and returns in form of bribes like i said 
And not only that, VT holders will also get a portion of the trading fees generated on the platform, but only in the pair they vote for or pairs. So if I vote for three pairs, when the epoch comes in play, whatever fee is generated from these three pairs, I'm going to get a portion of depending on my voting power versus others, right? There's always the proportion of you versus others. Keep that in mind. Very important. So that's two ways VT holders can earn. The third way is a rebase that the longer you stay in the system, the more voting power you get as time progresses, meaning at the end of your lockup period, you're going to get more T tokens. So three ways for VT holders to get money. And now you can understand that the whole system is fully decentralized. So the protocol doesn't choose the missions voters do based on how much money they get from bribes, so on and so forth. So that's the full beauty of it. And that's why I really enjoyed, you know, uh, dealing with Tina at least for the time being. And one more thing I will mention on the side that they did release NFTs called the NFTs and those NFTs actually give you or right now if you want to buy them on the secondary market, if you own them and stake them, you can get a portion of trading fees, also a portion of royalty fees because royalty fees are basically acquired when people buy them and sell them on the open market. So let's say that royalty fee was $1,000, it's going to get split on all the NFT stakers. And of course, they did mention in their white paper that there will be future incentives for uh, the, uh, for the NFT holders. All right. Now I'm going to end this video actually today, but with everything I just told you, I'm not going to dive more into details of the white paper, because like I said, I please advise you to go to the white paper and check more numbers. If you are a numbers guy, and this is an advice actually, like it's better for you to go to the docs and check everything you need to know. What is the per what is the fee percentage that you receive based on your voting power? How much should you lock, etc., etc.? So all of this is very important to understand. Perhaps one more thing I want to say is that if I go to the platform, there's also referral rewards, but those are not what you would think. So if someone uses your code to enter Thena, and even if they enter the pools, so the liquidity, so the farms, you're not going to get any additional reward from that. The only reward you'll be getting is a referral trading reward. So meaning if they trade using Thena, using uh, Thena swap, you're going to get a portion of the trading fee that they incurred when they made the trade. So that's how the referral system works in basically not only Thenify, but then this full decentralized governance model called V33. All right. And again, the token performance is not something I'm going to stress on because keep in mind, it's an emissions token. Right now, it, it retains value from the number of voter voting power that people have, meaning because there's a lot of people that hold this token and they're using it to earn bribe money from voting on future epochs, that's how the token retain value. And of course, from demand of basically buying up the token and in order to pair it with USDT, BNB or BUSD to earn additional rewards, as well as future potential uh, price appreciation with, for example, more things being implemented to protect the price of fee. But that's all speculation right now. I think the only thing that they have coming up from what I read is that they're going to have V3 LP uh, model implemented in Thena. And that's something that I'm going to uh, talk in a you know future video on. I'm not going to waste more time way more of your time in discussing this right now i just wanted to give a full overview all right so i really hope you stuck around till the end i hope i brought you some value with this thanks again see you in the next one have a good one